So we are now starting the new unit which is called medical physics and this is all about how we use different types of usually it's waves but it's also something else here for medical diagnosis and to get information about different structures and illnesses and whatnot. So the first thing that we are starting off with is ultrasound and we are first going to talk about how ultrasound is actually produced. So if you just generally recall what ultrasound waves really are, then the ultrasound is just, first of all, it's a sound wave, as the name also shows. But this is a sound wave which has a frequency which is greater than 20,000 or 20 kilohertz, right? So this is a wave, this is a sound wave which has a frequency which is greater than 20 kilohertz and why we use this above normal sound waves will uh, slowly and surely become evident to you. So in our chapter here we are just going to look at the use of ultrasound in medical diagnosis but it's also really important when we talk about sonar methods and whatnot. But anyway let's get back to the topic here. So this is all about the production of ultrasound. So ultrasound is produced by a certain material which is known as a piezoelectric crystal. So obviously sounds really cool. Let's have a look at what this piezoelectric crystal looks like. So kind of a let down, not really the prettiest thing that you have ever seen and it's understandable. But again, this is what the piezoelectric crystal looks like. This is just the visual aspect of it. And how is it really used for uh, producing ultrasound is like this is that we have the piezoelectric crystal like this and this is sort of uh, sandwiched between two electrodes like so so this is how they are actually attached and this is again something else here just we'll talk about this in a minute what this is so this is what this looks like and this here is the piezoelectric crystal And here across these ends, this one and this one is applied an alternating voltage. All right. So let's just give ourselves some space to work with. And then let's try to understand what is really happening here. So what happens with a piezoelectric crystal is that it's arranged in this way with uh, two of these really usually these are silver electrodes this one and this one so it's sandwiched between these two silver electrodes and to this is applied an alternating voltage so when this alternating voltage is applied and using some different technical factors such as the size and the shape of this piezoelectric crystal the alternating voltage and the alternating voltage right now if uh, this helps you to make your learning easier you can apply you can think of this just as some pressure or some force being applied so when the alternating voltage is applied the piezoelectric crystal changes shape P is short for piezoelectric so it changes shape when it changes shape the alternating voltage because it's alternating in uh, its magnitude and also in its direction so the shape is consistently changing so it might be compressed in some points and then it might expand again so the alternating voltage basically causes waves or you can say sound in the 
ultrasound region to be produced. And here the technical stuff is that whenever you are using a piezoelectric crystal, you put some thought into the shape and the size of the crystal that you are using. And that shape and size is important because it determines at which frequency uh, of the alternating voltage when it's going to be equal to the natural frequency of vibration of the piezoelectric crystal. Remember this phenomenon is called resonance which we studied back in simple harmonic motion. So then it's going to cause a resonance and this is going to produce an ultrasound wave. So a certain size of the crystal causes resonance. when the applied frequency and this is obviously the applied frequency of the AC equals the natural frequency of vibration. So this is how a uh, production of ultrasound waves work. So let's also have a look at how this uh, frequency is really produced. What effect does the alternating voltage have on the shape of the piezoelectric crystal? So when you have a voltage which is applied in a certain way, it can cause the structure of this uh, piezoelectric crystal to compress. But when it's applied in the opposite polarity, notice that positive here becomes, becomes the negative and this negative becomes the positive. So this is causing like a stretching and compressing of the structure of the crystal. And this is what produces that frequency. And the cool thing about a piezoelectric crystal is this, that it can be used as both a generator and also it can be used for detecting the ultrasound. So right now what we've just talked about is how we can use the piezoelectric crystal to produce ultrasound waves. Now if you just turn the tables around, you also get how you can use the piezoelectric crystal for detection of ultrasound. So remember how previously when we were talking about the process of production, so what we said was this that you are applying a alternating voltage and that is going to give you a frequency, right? So uh, waves which correspond to a certain frequency. So this forward path you can say was basically related to the production, right? If you want to produce ultrasound waves, what you'll have to do is you'll have to apply an alternating voltage to these, uh, to the piezoelectric crystal and that go that's going to give you the frequency. And when we talk about the detection the reverse process takes place which is that if you have a certain frequency of ultrasound waves being incident on the piezoelectric crystal you will get an alternating voltage and this voltage can then be processed for further information so let's also make some sort of a small visual aid so if this is the alternating voltage which is applied so then we get the frequency of some certain ultrasound waves All right. So again, you know uh, from AS as well that sound is a longitudinal wave. So what happens is that since it's a longitudinal wave, it consists of compressions and rarefactions. So when the compressions and rarefactions of this uh, incoming ultrasound wave are incident on the piezoelectric crystal, This again causes 
the crystal to oscillate or vibrate right so now what this is is basically the diagram that we saw above but in reverse this time there is no voltage which is applied this is just being compressed and uh, compressed and extended because of the incoming ultrasound waves and in reverse because of this compression and extension a alternating voltage will be produced against the ends so basically across the electrodes of uh, the across the silver electrodes from which the piezoelectric crystal was connected so an alternating voltage is produced across the ends or let's say across the electrodes and basically this voltage is amplified and further processed for obtaining further information right so for any type of uh, diagnosis that you're doing or anything else that you're doing this is how the detection part of the ultrasound waves works so you're using the same piezoelectric crystal for the production you are using the uh, application of an alternating voltage to produce a frequency of waves which correspond to the ultrasound region and similarly when the ultrasound waves of a certain frequency are incident on the piezoelectric crystal that pr produces an alternating voltage.